Hi there, I'm Logan Medish, and this is High Caliber History. Today we're going to take a brief biographical look at a man who was widely regarded as the protege of John Moses Browning. This man is known as Diudne Save. Born on May 23rd, 1888, Diudne Save went to work for FN shortly after high school. It was here that he would cross paths repeatedly with the 20th century's most prolific arms designer, John Moses Browning. When France approached FN to design a new type of semi-automatic pistol in 1921 with a 15 round capacity, their chief designer, John M. Browning, declined, unimpressed with the potential of higher capacity pistols. It was Save who designed an experimental double stack magazine mated to an FN 1903 pistol chambered in 9x20mm that was provided to Browning when he finally accepted the French call for a different combat pistol design. One locked breech option was designed using the new magazine, with a patent being granted in February of 1927, four months after John Moses Browning's death. The result was the 13-round Grammondentment pistol. After patents on key designs used in Colt's 1911, also a Browning design, expired, Save further modified the Redentment incorporating those now free-to-use features. The late 1920s kept him quite busy. In 1928, he traveled to Yugoslavia to set up a state arsenal. The following year, in 29, he returned to Belgium, where he oversaw the manufacture of the commercial version of the Browning automatic rifle, more commonly known simply as the BAR. By 1930, he'd been promoted to become FN's chief weapons designer, now occupying the position vacated a few years earlier by the death of John Browning. Transitioning back to the pistol portion of this story, the French term grand puissance, or high power, was first applied to the design which became the French GP35 self-loading pistol, or FN Browning high power, in 1934. The high power was the first 9x19mm handgun to utilize a true staggered column magazine, and despite Browning's name being associated with the gun, the high power design is essentially saves, not Browning's. When Save's native Belgium was invaded during World War II, he fled to the United Kingdom and there found work at Enfield. When World War II ended, he continued to create, and one of his rifle designs was based around his patented gas-operated tilting breech block, which first debuted with the FN Model 1949. Too late for World War II, it was quickly supplanted by modern rifles, including the HK G3 and, somewhat ironically, the FN FAL. To conform with the US-led NATO ammunition selection, the FAL was redesigned to handle the 7.62 by 51 NATO cartridge. While the United States eventually chose the T-44 rifle, which became the M14, most of the European allies chose variants of the FAL. Now, the FAL design has been used by more than 90 countries with more than 2 million produced worldwide. The design, much like the high power, has been so common among military forces that soldiers from opposing armies have both carried FAL variants in the field at the same time. Diudne Save's contribution to military firearms extends well beyond these two well-known examples. For example, the FN Baby Browning in 25 ACP was much more his design than that of John Moses Browning's. His life's work is a series of remarkable achievements in the arms world at the exact moment when they were needed most. When he died on October 12, 1970, his firearms were still protecting the Western world. He was, without a doubt, one of the best arms designers in history. That fact alone makes it all the more sad that most people have never heard of him. Well, that's all I've got to, for you on this biographical episode of High Caliber History. I hope you learned something, and I hope it's inspired you to go out and learn some more. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next episode.